Well, I just, before I get started, I want to note how incredibly happy I am to be cooking savory in this kitchen right now. I think I've only ever been in the NYT cooking studio making something sweet, which of course I love, but really nice to be cooking food we're all going to be excited to eat for lunch. Hi everyone, I'm Claire Saffetz. I'm in the NYT cooking studio. Today I'm showing you a suite of three Thanksgiving potato side dishes. I feel like potatoes don't really get the love they deserve on Thanksgiving because there's so many other things going on. So today we're going beyond the mashed potato and I'm showing you three great side dishes where potatoes really have a chance to sing. Like I am so happy when there are potatoes on the table. I love them baked, I love them mashed, I love them roasted, I love them fried, obviously fried. My favorite bite on Thanksgiving, my favorite bite of food, is a little bit of turkey, potato, a little bit of cranberry, and gravy. To me, like that is the perfect combination of flavors. So the recipes that I'm showing you today were designed to kind of fit into that assemblage of food, but I really wanted to show off the versatility of the potato, so everything is like a little bit creamy and a little bit crispy. I want the best of all worlds on Thanksgiving. So the first side dish I'm gonna show you is a French dish called Pomme Boulangère. It is kind of like a classic gratin, but instead of cream and cheese, it is made with stock and caramelized onions. For the dish, I'm using fingerling potatoes, um, like a slightly unusual choice for boulangere, but they're really easy to slice on a mandolin. I like how they're all kind of like regular in size. You don't have to peel them. And I like the slightly waxier texture of fingerling. So I would say like about an hour ago, I started cooking the onions. They've just been hanging out, so I took two large onions, peeled them, halved them, and thinly sliced. Then I started cooking them in the skillet in three tablespoons of butter. I started them on sort of higher heat, and once they turned translucent and got soft, I turned them down and then just let them go low and slow, stirring them occasionally until they had this even blonde color. To get to this point, it took me about a half an hour. So caramelizing onions is not a quick operation. You want to let them slowly take on color and develop. So you can see this was, you know, two onions really filled up the skillet and now they cook down quite a bit. Caramelized onions and stock and thyme, like these are really the sort of flavors that make up the backbone of the dish. I'm gonna turn off the heat, dump these onions into this bowl. So I have one garlic clove here, which sometimes when I'm like, there's one garlic clove in this dish, like what is that even doing? But I'm actually using it to prep the baking dish. I'm gonna peel it and cut it in half. And then I'm gonna rub the cut sides all in the bottom and around the sides of the baking dish. It's just going to kind of like infuse the subtle flavor of garlic into the dish. And now I'm going to grease the baking dish with some room temp butter. You can set this aside. So now we're moving into assembly of the pomme boulangere. I'm going to do a step that you maybe haven't done before if you've made gratin, which is to pre-cook the potatoes. Pre-cooking does a few things. It coats the potatoes in a little bit of fat and you can sort of season all the slices that way so it does help to sort of flavor them. It also puts a little color on them which is again adding flavor and it also pre-cooks them so that they bake a little bit faster. I'm slicing a third at a time and then cooking them. I don't want to slice them all because potatoes will brown if they're left out you know, after they've been cut and exposed to the air. And I don't want to put them in water to hold them to prevent browning because I don't want to wash off the starch. I want all the potato starch to make it into the baking dish because that's going to help to set everything together. Skillet on low. Hold the potato from the very end as you slice and get it going. And then my tip for using a mandolin, I mean, you can either use a glove to protect your hand, which is a very good idea, or you can basically like slide with your palm rather than your fingertips once you get down toward the bottom. And when you slide with your palm, you can keep your fingers like up and out of the way. So you want to try to work somewhat quickly because you don't want the potatoes to start to brown. I'm also going to add one of my thyme sprigs. I'm going to lightly season these because we are adding stock, which tends to be fairly salty. So give them a really good toss because that is going to coat them in all of that butter. This should take about five minutes. When these are kind of part cooked, you should be able to kind of, like it should have a little bit of a bend like that. 
These are just hanging out and they're gonna let them cool a little bit. I have my onions. Now I'm going to warm up my stock. And the reason homemade stock is preferable to store-bought, it's gonna have a high gelatin content, making it with chicken bones at home. So it's like you have the starch from the potatoes and the gelatin from the stock and all of those things are gonna kind of cohere until you have this really sort of nice like amalgamation that you can slice. So I'm just bringing this up to like a simmer. I'm gonna start to layer everything into my baking dish. I'm gonna do about a third of the potatoes. If you're using homemade stock, give it a taste. You wanna make sure that's really well seasoned and there's a chance that it's under seasoned, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to this. And now I'm gonna layer half of my onions over those potatoes, then half of the remaining potatoes, or a third of the total, the remaining onions. And I like to sort of press down to make sure everything is somewhat compacted. So the final assembly step is to pour my stock into my baking dish. Now I want to pour the stock in just so it barely covers the potatoes. And it's okay if there is sort of like a very topmost layer of potatoes peeking out. We're ready to bake this. If you wanna make it ahead of time, you can let this cool, cover it, throw it in the fridge, and then bake it the day of. You wanna let it come to room temperature first. But we're gonna bake it uncovered in a 400 degree oven. What will happen is the potatoes will absorb and like soak in all of that stock flavor. Some of the water will evaporate. The top layer of potatoes are gonna get brown and crispy. And then we're gonna take it out and let it set before we slice it. The second side dish is kind of a, a mashup, pun intended, between Dutch's potatoes and twice baked potatoes. So this is actually based on a dish my mom made for like my entire childhood and still makes, which is so delicious. So you basically take this yolky, buttery, kind of stiffer mashed potato and you pipe them into the potato skins and bake them again. They're so, so good. Again, you can make those ahead of time. The base potato is a russet. I picked out specifically like six sort of medium small russets. Those are roasting in my oven at 425. So whenever you're doing any kind of like potato puree or mash, you wanna work with the potatoes hot and you wanna add ingredients to them that are also hot. That is going to decrease your chances of getting like a gummy texture. And in the meantime, I'm gonna grab my potatoes, which are done roasting. Ah, potato down, potato down. Okay, so here are my potatoes. I'm gonna get them onto my cutting board. Now these roasted whole, like I said, directly on the oven rack, and it makes the skins really crispy. And that's important because I want the skins to hold their shape because I'm going to add all that potato puree back into the skins and bake them again. So I have six potatoes. When I cut them in half, I'll have 12 like skins, little boats, but I'm only gonna use eight. You can see the steam coming off the potatoes. And I'm going to scoop the flesh into my ricer. It's important to leave the skins intact. I'm gonna rice these directly into my saucepan. And once that mixture comes up to a bare simmer, you can just turn it off. You don't need it hotter than that. So I sort of have like no feeling in my hands. If you are having a hard time handling the hot potatoes, you can put on like an oven mitt. And now I'm just gonna repeat that cutting and scooping process until I've riced all of my potatoes into the saucepan. You can see how the skins of the russets are a little bit wrinkled. That's how you know that they're done. It wrinkles as you know steam is released, as it cools, but it should be squeezable and nice and soft. Okay, so that's the last bit of potato. And then I'm gonna generously season it with salt and pepper. I have just a little bit of nutmeg. It actually, I think, like increases the savory quality of the potatoes, and it gives it like a little bit of warmth. But you can see that it really sort of immediately forms this beautiful, super smooth and fluffy mash mixture. So you want to mix as little as possible with, with potato like this because that will make them a little bit gummy. So now off the heat, I'm going to add my yolks because I don't want to cook them, although the mixture is, you know, hasn't been on the burner. So I'm going to add my four egg yolks. And I really like using egg yolks to enrich the potatoes as opposed to cream. It just does something a little bit different and it also is going to increase the kind of like browning properties of the potatoes when I bake them again. So I'm just folding that egg yolk mixture in gently. So now that the egg yolks are folded in, this mixture is done. Shout out to my mom who always made the most delicious Dutchess potatoes. So this can cool for a little bit. Go ahead and pick out the eight halves that you like the best. This one is great, like I see how it's like a little boat. It's completely holding its shape. 
skin is still nice and crispy. So this looks great. Uh, and as I said, the four remaining skins from those other two potatoes, like this is just a snack. This is what the cook gets. My potato mixture has set up. If you don't have a piping bag or you don't feel like using one, you can just like scoop and spoon into the potato skins. That's what my mom did. Go ahead and lay the bag flat. And then I like to use like a bench or bowl scraper to just press the mixture toward the point and kind of force it down into the bottom of the bag. Just make it easier for you to pipe everything. So then you're gonna gather the ends of the bag and twist, just like this. And that will get you a little bit of the mixture right at the tip. The reason you're piping them back into only eight of the skins rather than 12 is because we want to kind of mound them over the top so they look really full and just like very appetizing. My mom always put a little bit of paprika over her Dutch's potatoes, so that's what I'm gonna do. And just a little bit, it's kind of just there, it's not really gonna like add a lot of flavor, it's really just there for color and to highlight the texture of the potatoes. All right, these look great. So now I'm ready to bake them again. Now there is a do ahead here, so if you wanted to assemble these ahead of time, you could go up until this step, then let them come to room temperature, cover them, chill them, so you could do it overnight. Then the day you wanna bake them, let them come to room temperature, and then throw them in the oven. So my third and final Thanksgiving side potato recipe is garlicky mashed potato cake. It is kind of like if hash browns and mashed potatoes like got together and had a baby. So we bake potatoes, crisp them up in this buttery garlicky mixture in a skillet until it's crispy on the outside and fluffy on the inside. Also really, really easy. These are really fun. These are really, really fun dishes to make. So I'm making it in a 10 inch nonstick skillet. It does need to be oven safe, so just keep that in mind. Just as I did for the Dutch's potatoes, roast at 425, you don't have to poke holes, just scrub the potatoes, put them right on the rack. So while my potatoes finish baking, I'm gonna do the first step of the recipe, which is to cook together my butter and garlic. I'm a huge garlic lover. I'm kind of like of the belief that you can never really have too much. I mean, you can, but I like it a lot. And I have my medium nonstick skillet gonna preheat it over like medium, get a little bit of color on the garlic, and at the same time, I'm going to be browning the butter. And this is just gonna add a ton of flavor to the dish. Again, this is like buttery, garlicky, sour creamy mixture. This is really kind of the, the flavor profile. I turn it down to low. So my garlic has a little bit of color on it, which looks great. It's starting to feel soft. My butter is golden. The butter will continue to get a little bit darker. So that's why you wanna take it off the heat. And you just don't wanna go too far on the burner too fast, otherwise it could burn. So I'm just gonna kinda let this gently carry over to infuse and develop lots of flavor while my potatoes finish cooking. The potatoes are done. Don't bake your potatoes in foil. There is no need to do that. Like you actually want moisture loss to occur in the oven because I want the potatoes to dry out so that I can then add like moisture back in in the form of fat, which is going to enhance their flavor. But just baking them like directly on the rack, no steam, that's gonna help a lot. Again, as with the Dutch's potatoes, you wanna let the potatoes cool, but only until they're not so hot, they're gonna like burn your hands when you go to scoop them out. So you still want them to be as hot as possible. And I'm not saving the skins, so this is something where you could do like a loaded potato skin appetizer with the skins. You could also actually peel the potatoes. So as they sit and there's some steam buildup, the skins separate a little bit from the flesh. So you could just peel the potatoes that way. But I think scooping them is easier. They really are extremely hot. Now what I wanna do is just really coarsely chop it up. You don't even have to use a knife. You could just use like a, a bench scraper. It's very soft. And I'm not mashing it. I'm just breaking up the flesh into smaller pieces. Some of it is gonna just get mashed because it's already soft. Some of it's gonna remain in like slightly firmer pieces and hold its shape a little bit better. So I'm just going until the pieces are kind of bite-sized. I think in the recipe it says like no larger than a walnut half. 
just something you can easily kind of put onto your fork. And actually, it's handy to have a bench scraper like this for transferring the mixture. So I'm going to pull my skillet back onto my burner, and everything is going to go into the skillet. So I'm going to transfer all of the potato. Then my sour cream. Again, you can use crumb fresh. And that's at room temperature, only because we don't want it to be cold because we want the potatoes to stay hot. Then just that little pinch of nutmeg, I mean truly just a pinch, and then lots and lots of salt and pepper. And now I just want to fold everything together. And it's this action that is basically mashing up some of the potato. You're going to bake this again, but I turned the oven down from 425, which was the roasting temperature for the potatoes, to 400. Most nonstick skillets that are oven safe are oven safe up to 400. So we're just going to bake at 400. And now that everything is evenly mixed, I am going to use my spatula to press everything down and mash into an even layer, one big potato pancake, essentially. So I'm putting the skillet over medium high now that I have my potato pancake formed. And I want to cook it until I see some like nice golden browning on the bottom. I'm going to give it a little taste, actually. Yeah. It's so good. So I have it over medium high. This will go for like five to 10 minutes. And I'll just use my spatula to give it a little peek underneath. The bottom is looking nice and golden. I'm starting to see a little bit of browning around the edges. Now I'm going to transfer it to my 400 degree oven. And it's just going to go until the surface is kind of very lightly browned. It will look a little bit matte. And I will also see some more browning around the edges of the potato pancake. Everything is out of the oven and ready to taste. It looks and smells so good. Visually, what I love is seeing all of the like little browned potato bits on each dish because I know it's gonna be crispy on top and then underneath everything is like soft and creamy and delicious. Here, I just wanna point out, so this actually went almost a full hour and a half. What you're looking for when you pull it out is any kind of pooling broth or stock in there that it's thickened because of all the starch from the potato. And there's kind of like a telltale ring that forms the perimeter of the baking dish where the stock kind of like caramelizes and, and forms crust there. And of course the potatoes themselves are super crisp and golden brown. It forms like little potato chips on top, which I love. I'm a picker. This is one of my worst habits. So like I'm someone who would just be like picking the crispy parts off the top and eating them before dinner. I think I'm gonna start with the Duchess. I actually really like having the egg yolks as a source of richness rather than cream because it's like the egg yolks with the nutmeg really works so well with the potato. Like I definitely wanna eat this with a little gravy on top, with a little bit of turkey. All right, so the potato cake. The smell of it coming out of the oven, you just get like all of the kind of intermingling of the butter and the garlic and the tang from the sour cream. So good. The surface has a sort of very like light crispiness to it. I love getting all that caramelization and the tanginess from sour cream and creme fraiche. It helps to kind of cut through all of those other flavors. And now the boulanger. I think for something that's sort of as like simple or has as few ingredients as the boulanger, it produces so many different flavors. I get the chicken stock, plus all of the thyme, plus the butter, of course the caramelized onions. And I love the contrast between the really crispy, almost like potato chip surface and the potatoes underneath, which are so soft. It's kind of addictive. They're so delicious. Of course, don't limit yourself only to Thanksgiving. These are like wonderful potato side dishes all winter long. What's better than a potato? Thanksgiving, remember, it's the Super Bowl of cooking. You can do it. Get, get lots of rest the night before. Try these out. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for watching. Oh, you're right, I can't say that. It's the big game. I don't want to say the big game of cooking. 
Yeah, sorry. You know what I mean.